Okay, now that the train is mostly gone. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. I have run out of lids for my winter sewing, my usual winter sewing containers, these. So I am moving on to Ziploc bags. Now these are Ziploc bags that I have uh, used, uh, washed, and now I am saving them. And I have cut some slits in the bottom. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. My fingers sticking through there. To allow for drainage, and I'm going to use these for winter sewing. I thought I would take you through what to do. Um, if you use Ziploc bags, this is a super cost-effective method of winter sewing because you've already got the bag, you just wash it and save it for when you're ready. And um, I did some last year, they worked really well. I was really keen on it. So without further ado, so you've got a Ziploc bag. You're gonna take your scissors and cut the corners on either side. And then I'm gonna make small slits, very small slit. Turn that a couple times so you can try and see it along the bottom. You don't wanna make these too big. You do not want your soil to fall out. You do want to allow for enough drainage. So I did about six holes along the bottom, six little slits along the bottom in addition to the two corners. Okay, add that to my stack. And I'll do that, I have this really big one too. So I'll go ahead and cut the corners of this one. And these are really easy that if, if you're finding you're not getting enough drainage, it is quite easy to add more. Okay, so there's the big one. Smaller Ziploc bags, this is a sandwich size. These are not big enough, really. Um, you could maybe get enough depth of soil, um, but it wouldn't be really enough to keep it moist. You'd have to water it a lot more often in something this small. Additionally, um, as a regular winter sewing container, these are also a little too small. Something like this is a little too small. Um, you want milk jug size or something like this for your container. Uh, because they hold more soil, they will stay more moist. Uh, you could do it in something like this, but you'd really have to stay on top of making sure that it's got water in it. I'm gonna use a uh, partridge pea today. This is an annual. Um, it is a cold stratification 10 days. So it doesn't need a long period of cold, but here we are, I'm down to it, so. All right, so there's my bag. This is just a regular square piece of plastic. Uh, and I'm going to grab the soil. Fill it. I want a good bit of soil. Again, so it will hold the moisture that you need. Uh, you also want enough room for the roots to grow. Once they get started. of soil there. All right, that should do. All right, I'm gonna give it a bit of a press down just to get it locked in place. Okay, so the corners will end up getting squished flat like this, which is good. That actually, I decided last year that actually made drainage really nice. 
Uh, so I'm actually going to make that curve over here and it gives you a slightly more of a square bottom for it to sit. And just, so that doesn't fall out. You can see my drainage holes in the bottom. There we go. This one was probably a little bigger than I wanted. Nothing's perfect in my garden. Right. So I want a bit of a flat top to this. Now, before I put my seeds in, one of the key components to using Ziploc bags for this is making sure that they stay up. So I'm going to add some stakes. These are Leftover chopsticks. Okay. Like so. So that'll help the top part of the bag stay. And now I'm gonna use these. So I'm gonna use these leftover clothespins from a project that I did with my kid to help keep the bag open. I think I'll do about half of these seeds. Oh yeah, maybe not even half. I think I'll just do some of these seeds. <laughs> Look at how many seeds are in there. What? Uh, all right, that's good. That should be plenty. This is an annual, um, so I will have plenty of seeds left over for next year. I'm gonna do it in my garden just like I do, oh goodness, lost one. Um, tomatoes and vegetable annuals, cosmos all that kind of thing. So I am sprinkling them in along the top. Let's see if I can find that one I lost. Got it. Okay. And since those are big or bigger, bigger seeds, since those are bigger seeds, I'm going to add a layer on top. seeds are sown. Yay! Two more things that I want to do before I put this out in the cold. One is to have it soak in some water uh, and the other is to zip up the top of the bag. Um, lately uh, I have been taking my little spray bottle and just moistening the top so I don't have to wait quite as long for the water to absorb before I put them out. So I'm going to give the top bit of water spray and now I'm going to zip it up and sit it over in my water tray. So I am going to get this zipped closed. I'm going to leave open both ends. So I've got this end open a little bit now that I've got it tracked right. You know how sometimes these things, they don't want to track right unless you start from an edge. Okay, so when I'm going to put it outside now, I have just these two little openings. Some rain can get in, uh, some heat can get out. It doesn't need to be much, and I can always come back and check on it if I need to. Uh, as it starts getting warmer in the spring, instead of taking the lids off like you would with a jug or uh, my usual containers, you really just open the Ziploc bag. Uh, it makes it really easy. And then um, when I go to, when once they've germinated and I go to plant it, I just tear the bag open and then I can break the soil apart into chunks. It was really easy to do. I don't have to try to dig it out of the bag itself. I'll take you through that in the spring. But all I have left to do with this one now is to put it in some water. So I'll go do that. So to review, you need a Ziploc bag. You could use brand new ones if you want. Um, I save mine and reuse them. You need to cut the corners off and then make small slits 
along the bottom. You then fill it with soil, stake the two ends, stake either end so the upright part of the bag stays open, and then clip either side. You could just clip one side if you feel pretty strongly about your stake staying in place. Mine didn't stay. I had to clip both sides last year. And then you want to zip it up so it's all closed except for the two ends. That's my partridge pea sewn and uh, absorbing water ready to go outside. Let me take you over there so you can see it absorb. Here it is sitting in some water. I'm going to keep an eye on how well this is draining. I may poke a couple of more holes along the bottom, along this edge, since it's not directly underneath. Uh, so even if the bottom is frozen to the ground, if I've got some holes on the side, it can let, drain, let water out. Um, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you live in a really windy area, uh, what I did last year was if I had two of these, I took a single stake through the th through. I probably will do it on this one too. Like this and like this. Stake them together. And that helped them stay uh, upright and help keep them from falling over. This is something that you can do if you find you have a need for it. But just to give you an idea of what you might need to look out for. This is a little bit more floppy than your usual hard jug. <laughs> so you can imagine that might need this little extra support. Okay, everybody. Um, I hope that this has helped you um, figure out how you can do some winter sewing, even if you don't have milk jugs. Um, these Ziploc bags work really well. So uh, have a nice afternoon and I'll see you in the garden.